Inside Xbox's show of the week. I'm Jane. And I'm Mike, and this week I've been playing Wolfenstein The New Order. Actually, Mike, I think you'll find you've been playing Connect Star Wars. Uh, how do you know that? How did you get that footage? Hack the camera. According to this, you also spent £140 on dance lessons and hand solo waistcoats. You should get stronger passwords. What else does it say? It also says you've been playing Watch Dogs. All right, yes, I have been playing Watch Dogs, and you'd think if my life followed any of the rules of the universe, it'd make me more wary of the dangers of rogue hackers like Jane. But no, even after eight whole hours of blowing flimsy security systems wide open, activating grenades using the power of my mobile, and endlessly trolling people with traffic bollards, lol, I've been hoist with my own petard. That's Shakespearean for made a tit of myself. That's right. the Still, at least Watch Dogs is shaping up well. My biggest concern was that it wouldn't sell the fancy of being able to control an entire city from your phone, but just the act of flitting between cameras to plan your next move makes this very different from your average cover shooter. And that's before you get into the later abilities on the skill tree which allow you to temporarily disable helicopters or plunge an entire city block into darkness. If you aren't already on an NSA watch list, buying this game will guarantee you a spot. I didn't know. In terms of the single player story, Aiden Pierce himself seems like a bit of a dullard in the Connor Kenway mould. But fortunately his mate Geordie Chin, which we're pretty sure is a finishing move in the northeast of England, makes up for it. That is a terrible plan. I love it. Crucially, the missions we've played so far are imaginatively designed, like this one that has you breaking out of a prison using nothing more than a smartphone. Alright, a smartphone and a shotgun, but mainly a smartphone. The hacker fantasy extends to the multiplayer too. If your console's online, by default it's open to being invaded by other players. In a smart touch, the invading player is actually penalised for killing you, so it's nowhere near as trolly as it could be, but we're still anticipating some hilarious griefing. You could switch the mode off, but where's the fun in that? Yeah, that's the way to do it. The rest of the time, the whole of Chicago is your playground, and you're free to revel in its city centre architecture, its leafy suburbs, and the fact that some lunatic town planner decided to put centrally automated bollards almost everywhere. So yeah, I just use this phone and I can hack into bank accounts, medical records, security cameras, Roombas. Cool, is it difficult? Hacking? No, no, it's really easy, look. If video games have taught me anything, it's that no one bothers to lock down their CCTV cameras, private terminals or doors with anything like a proper security system. For instance... From vending machines to security bots, everything electronic in Rapture has anti-meddling circuitry that runs on blue goo instead of, you know, electrical signals. Who knew you could program security software with liquid? The liquid moves through pipes a dam site slower than zeros and ones through network cable, which makes rewiring Rapture's gizmos a cinch. On the other hand, if you fail, it zaps the hell out of you, which literally never happens when I type my email password in wrong. Ow. Speaking of passwords, everyone in Gotham City needs to go back to password school and stop using the first words that pop into their heads. Such as the password serve protect for the Gotham Police Department. It says that, like, on your badge, Gotham Police. Or the password for the jail cells, lockdown. Very clever. And the password for Penguin's ship. The final offer is make a deal. Don't you know, Penguin, you're supposed to use at least one number? At least Mike Channel's password was I like cars with ones instead of eyes. Admittedly, you do also need Batman's cryptographic sequencer to bypass the city's security consoles and track down radio signals, but he'd probably lend it to you if you ask him. He seems nice. Time to talk. Where is Cobblepot? Let me go! If you insist. Mass Effect is set in the 22nd century when the galaxy's most widespread security technology for keeping rogue shepherds out of private terminals counts on Shepard not being able to match two identical symbols or pages of text. What does the text say? Is it code? 
it doesn't even matter. This one looks a bit like this one. Now give me all your credits and spaceships. Fallout 3's monochrome terminals are low-fi because all proper 21st century computers were lost in the great nuclear apocalypse. So was all 21st century security technology, it turns out, because in the capital wasteland, computer security is powered by word puzzles. This is easier even than a regular password system because unlike a regular password system, it tells you when you're getting close to the right answer. So it's not coyote, or coated, or chased, but it's a bit like all of them. Aha! Not even Hotmail tells you when you're getting warmer. Thanks, Robco Industries. Hackers in the world of Deus Ex Human Revolution get to play a really fun mini-game in which they balance risk and reward to get from one point in the network to the other. No wonder everyone's doing it. Best of all, unlike everything we've been led to believe about hacking, it requires literally no programming skills. You'll be able to wrap your head around this visual system of network nodes even if you struggle to configure presets on your car radio. Access granted. It makes you wonder why Sarif's head of cybersecurity, Pritchard, is so full of himself. You fixed that firewall yet? You don't fix an entire firewall. You find the loophole and plug it. Then did you plug it? Yes, I did. Want to know how? Oh, wait, I forgot. Ex-cop. I doubt you'd understand. Now it's time to see what you've been saying in the comments and over the Ox phone. Uh, still nothing. That's a worthwhile investment. First up, your comments on last week's show about Wolfenstein The New Order and the worst history lessons games taught us about World War II. World War II video games like these are just about the worst history lesson you could get. Look. Wrath of Jigglypuff is confused, saying, So wait, let me get this straight, there weren't any Nazi zombies riding resurrected dinosaurs from space. Not according to reputable historians, no. And the disreputable ones? Oh yeah, definitely, according to them. Sweet. Dave Tones, meanwhile, asks, With the Kinect, or lack of news this week, can you confirm that there is no choking out Nazis like Darth Vader in the new Wolfenstein game? That is just about the only way you can't kill Nazis in that game. Sorry, Dave. Will Cutter finally says, a robo-Nazi, eh? Well, I didn't Nazi that come. Get it? Oh, come on, he tried. Moving on, your comments on the video game titles that are much more awesome in Japan. Video game titles are routinely translated and or rejigged into amazingly superior game names for the Japanese audience. We had more great suggestions like this from Larry Bundy Jr. who says, The Japanese name for the Mega Drive game Decapitac, Super Magical Flying Hat Turbo Turban Adventure, still holds the record for craziest title. Mr. Manguy17, meanwhile, assures us Ratchet Deadlocked was called Ratchet Giri Giri Milky Way Giga Battle in Japan. This will be your most intense challenge yet, Ratchet, but I do believe you're well equipped to handle it. But Super CJ12 thinks Streets of Rage is still a better title than Bare Knuckle. Hmm. Bare Knuckle, though. I used a pipe for most of that game. They should have just called it Pipe. Fair point. Finally, your comments on us playing the first Titanfall map pack expedition. All right. All right, Alex. Monsters. Left. Where? Monsters. Ah, yeah, monsters. Is that the same kind of monster as we had before? Similar, isn't it? It's pretty flappy. Yeah, another flappy monster. Gage Ridley was inspired and says, I heard Andy say future poops. I'm now inspired to write an 80s heavy metal song. Shouts at band. We have a new project to work on now. I guess, like, future poops. I thought by this point they'd have yeah. found some way of just... To convert it into, like... Yeah. Candy or something. Have I given away the theme of my concept album? Yeah, you better hurry up and get on it before oh, they do. God damn it. AA3015 says, If in the future they haven't worked out the whole poo into candy process, I will be sorely disappointed. What if they've done that already and just haven't told us? I'll have that if you don't eat it. Meanwhile, Powderplay thinks that they really missed a trick by not having the indigenous wildlife involved in the battles. Just imagine having a gun battle with a group of guys only for a winged beast to swoop down and grab you, flinging you into the air as you look down to see both teams under assault by quadruped creatures. But nope, all you get is set dressing. Actually, speaking of set dressing, I've been saying for a while we need to tidy this place up. It's a right state. So if you want to start on these boxes, get those moved over there. I'll move some of this loose stuff into long-term storage. It's Jane. Jane, not cool, Jane. Ah! 
why there are even traffic bollards in here. That's it for show of the week, but thanks for watching. And if you liked it, uh, don't just give your screen a thumbs up because we can't see that, but do hit the like button, please, on YouTube. And drop us a line at Outside Xbox on Twitter or Facebook.com slash Outside Xbox to say hi or other things. See you next time. Hello? Hello? Mm, it's for you. It's just a load of anguish shouting about bollards.